Welcome to the review of Wizardry 6, Bane of the Cosmic Forge. Wizardry 6 was created by Surtech and released in 1990. This is one of the most challenging role-playing games ever created. Thank goodness for us though, Surtech created a 100 plus page user manual. It details out all kinds of aspects of the game. It's phenomenal. Even though the graphics were behind the times for a 1990 game, all the other aspects are by far superior to similar games in the genre. The game can be played by either using the mouse or a keyboard. I wanted to switch it over to keyboard because it's much quicker and more efficient as you get used to it. Of course, one of the first things you have to do is create your party. Wizardry 6 allows you to have six party members. You choose your race, sex, and profession, and you get some random bonus points to distribute across the attributes. It's very difficult to get some classes such as Monk, Samurai, and Ninja because of the amount of bonus points required. I basically just am going to fast forward through the character creation process, but show you some of the aspects. There's some skills such as weaponry, where you get to choose how to distribute your points. There's also physical and academia skills. Spellcasters, of course, get to choose spells. One of the coolest aspects of this game is the different realms of magic. There's basically air, poison, earth, water, magic, and fire. You get spell points based on the realms which is definitely a twist compared to most role-playing games. After creating your characters, you add them to the party, you answer the copyright protection, and you're off to the beginning of the game. Toward the bottom of the screen, you'll notice that the text for messages appears. The top center of the screen is, of course, the party's first-person perspective. This is where you observe monsters, the dungeon, and so on. One of the very first things to get used to is the save mechanism. Again, it's extremely difficult game, so you're going to find yourself dying many times. Another thing to do is immediately equip your equipment. Your characters start with some decent equipment. Well, decent enough for level 1 characters, but you have to equip it. As you begin journeying around, you'll find some treasure chests that are just laying in the open. Thank goodness the designers gave you some helper chests such as these because, again, this is an extremely difficult game. So after taking the equipment and assigning them to your characters, you can move on to the next chest area. This chest is by far one of the most important places to go right away. And the reason is because they give you an amulet of life that can raise you from the dead seven times, or of course you can end up selling it for, I think, about 11,000 gold pieces. Now here's a treasure chest that has a trap on it. And we only have a ranger in the party as our rogue. So we're not too skilled with disabling traps. If you guess the wrong trap, it'll set it off almost for certain. Here's a little taste for some of the other traps you're going to be setting off. And you better get used to this. If you're foolish enough to walk off the ledge, you'll be presented with this screen. Pretty sweet. Be careful of other hazards such as this poisonous fountain, but decide to take a risk every once in a while because you can find fountains that restore stamina or even cure poison. 
but make sure to save the game often. Sometimes it gets really tedious walking around searching for things, not knowing what you're going to find. The scouting skill can really help from those regards. It can automatically tell you if something's near. You'll find secret buttons to open secret doors and treasure chests. And you'll come across many locked doors in your journey. There's some different ways of opening them. You can try to pick them if you have a thief type character. Or you can try to force them open if you have a lot of strength. This particular door is jammed so we cannot open it no matter how hard we try. And here is a door that we can force open. You can also open some doors by using special keys. You'll run into thousands and thousands of enemies on the way. On the right side of the screen, it shows you the enemies and the groups they're in. On the left side, it shows your character's options. Here we're having our spellcasters cast magic, and our other characters are going to be fighting with their weapons. Every time your characters get hit, you can of course hear the noise. The goofy thing is if a female gets hit, she sounds like a male. But when she dies, she sounds like a female. You'll notice that we put the enemies to sleep so the bats are at the top of there, not moving. Which is kind of a nice touch. A little cheesy, but kind of neat. So now we kill them, and every enemy when it dies explodes. You get experience points and gold after killing the enemies. Sometimes you'll find items. Throughout your adventure, you'll find these gates. These cannot be opened by force or pick. You have to have special keys to open them. It gets frustrating at times because really it's just random trying to find the key that works. There's many ways of attacking enemies. You can swing, thrust, bash, melee, and so on. Typically only the first three characters can attack hand to hand. However, if you have certain ranged or longer weapons, like whips, you can attack from the back. Ranged weapons and spells can hit any enemy on the battlefield. Some spells hit single enemies, while others hit an area. Wizardry 6 has all kinds of different magic resistances, which is awesome. It has heat, magic, death, you name it. I think there's about 8 to 10 different kinds. Characters can also use special items, such as this poison bomb. That uses the artifact skill. Some items you can actually equip and throw instead of using. There's all kinds of special features in the game, such as dragons being able to breathe acid, and monks being able to punch and kick. They can also do critical hits and kill enemies instantly. You'll notice that as you fight more powerful creatures, they can get multiple attacks. And some can hit your back character, such as these vines. And some can still hit your back characters by throwing. You'll also notice that sometimes your armor doesn't get penetrated. As combat switches to the next round, sometimes the monsters will change their order and back groups will advance. Just like you, monsters can cast spells. Only against you. They can also have special abilities such as vomiting on you and causing you to become nauseous. Some can paralyze you, while these bastards can really wreak havoc. They can paralyze you, 